so I think we're uh, by my watch bang on three o'clock um, so if we just uh, move on to the next slide we can show you the housekeeping for today so like we say, we do have a short poll running. If you um, would cast your votes in that, we'll close the poll off before we, before we start. Um, like I say, we're joined today by Kelly Briley and Tom Capper from Robert Scott, who are both regional sales managers. Um, they are going to, first of all, we are going to um, run through a, um, a, a bit of an introduction from them with the importance of, of cleaning in today's world. Um, we're also going to show you a interview um, section that we did with Andrew Smith, who's the restaurant manager at Dinner Stones. Um, and then there's gonna be a bit of cleaning demonstration from um, Kelly and Tom for top, middle and bottom um, before we move into the Q and A at the end with Tom and Kelly. Um, so do cast your vote in the poll. Um, and we will have that running for a couple of more minutes just, uh, just for, to give everyone a chance to vote. Um, like you say, please do ask questions using the chat function on the toolbar or the Q&A um, box at the bottom. And we'll keep all those questions to the end and we'll put them through to, um, to Tom and to Kelly in that. Um, just to let you know, the video we're about to play, which was filmed um, on site at the restaurant Dinner Stones um, with Kelly and Tom and Andrew Smith, the restaurant manager. It was filmed in a working environment. So there is a little bit of background noise. Um, so once we start the, um, the recording, we do recommend turning the volume up on your own laptop or computer speakers just whilst the video plays. Um, so without any further ado, we'll, we'll hand you over to Kelly and Tom and um, their trip to visit Dinner Stones. Thank you for joining us here today for this third installment of the webinar series. We've been running this for six, six weeks or so now and we've had uh, quite a bit of success so far. So um, today we brought our products into situ, into the hospitality setting. Um, and uh, myself <coughs> and Tom Kappa, um, I'm the regional sales manager for Robert Scott. I'm here today with Kelly Briley, our key account manager. And uh, I'm delighted to welcome to you Andrew Smith, the, the restaurant manager of this fantastic facility. Now. Uh, I think you'll all appreciate it's a great setting for this uh, for this web webinar and um, I'd just like to say thank you to Andrew for allowing us to film this webinar on his, uh, on his premises. So uh, thank you Andrew. Um, who, who are Robert Scott's? We're a, we're a cleaning and janitorial manufacturer. Um, our products are supplied all, all over the UK throughout our wide range of distributors and um, although I suppose we don't supply our products directly into uh, places like this. We work very closely with our distributors to ensure the right products are going into the right places. Uh, and obviously when our products turn up on site, <coughs> we, have a, we have a team of nine external sales representatives who help uh, guide facilities through how to, how to implement our systems, our products into, their, into the cleaner regimes. Um, yeah, so as I said, there's nine of us, um, myself and Kelly, we, we occupy 37 years worth of uh, cleaning, in, uh, cleaning experience and quite a big number and hopefully I think most of those numbers are coming from you Kelly actually, <laughs> surely I'm not that old but uh, yeah so um, basically what, what we want to get out of this guys is we want to help you, how can we help you and it's very difficult time for us all and obviously Hospitality has been hit very hard over the last uh, six months or so. Now, uh, obviously, we've chose the hospitality setting as a as our focus today, but it doesn't mean that um, our product training, our services can't be repl replicated within other industries like education, leisure, healthcare, healthcare, whatever it may be. Our team would like to share their expertise with you. Now, before I pass you over to Kelly, I'd like to talk to you about. What else we're going to be talking, talking about today and what else we're going to be doing. So we've got some uh, best cleaning practices with Kelly. She's going to share her expertise with you guys, a few of us. Uh, we're going to ask Andrew, who's a restaurant manager, what, what his um, problems have been since, uh, since obviously returning to business uh, after the lockdown. Um, <clears throat> and then we're going to do some product training with you guys. And then following that, it's over to you, the audience. Please send in your questions. Uh, we'll ask, we'll answer them to the best of our abilities. And uh, yeah, thank you. Well, over to you, Kelly. Thanks, Tom. That's great. Thanks for having 
next event. Yeah, so today's webinar, guys, it's just going to be really loosely based around training, uh, best practices, as you've read from the uh, webinar introduction. It's about those hidden touch points, really. Um, I think it's right to say, um, Andrew, that you were a bit nervous about the fact that your waiter staff, your restaurants have now become cleaners. I think, you know, whether you're at children in school, whether you're people in office blocks, whether you're out there in industry, whether you're someone just training at gym, I think we've all now become cleaners. We all have to develop cleaning. And I think it's a little unknown that we expect everybody to know what they're doing. Uh, me personally, I do a lot of cleaning in, uh, training in hospitals, and it's not a given that everybody knows how to clean. Um, am I right in saying, Andrew, that you'd probably have a cleaner in the morning that I do, and then your staff would maybe just maintain the tables and we'll the toilets? Have, we have a cleaner coming first thing in the morning. She does a thorough deep clean. Uh, there's two mornings where we don't walk into the evening, yeah. so she does more of a deep clean. She'll do table legs and chairs. Uh, and then obviously we wipe the tables down after each use. Yeah. Uh, there is more free time at the minute that's required, oh, so yeah. we're spending yeah. a bit more time cleaning the chairs down Brilliant. wherever we can. Yeah, and I think I get asked, and I know Tom and a lot of my colleagues have been asked, just those invisible touch points, guys. I think we've all been in that restaurant, and this is no criticism of anything here, but we've all been in that restaurant where the waitress comes, she'll spray the table, immediately blue roll that right off. Uh, and then walk away and that seed is clean. So hopefully today we're going to show you a few products that we've got in our range. Not massive selfie guys, we just want to let you know that by opening and bringing us in to try and help with the training, we're not going to try and oversell, we're not going to say that actually if you're bringing these cleaning practices you've got to start buying loads of new chemical, you've got to buy loads of new cleaning equipment, it's really not the case. Uh, so yeah, hopefully we're going to run through some training today, show you some secrets on touch point cleaning and help Andrew and his staff hopefully clean this uh, restaurant a bit more efficiently, uh, a bit more eco-friendly and ultimately a bit more sustainable as well, which is what we're all looking for in this time. So um, yeah, let's kick off. So um, first area of control, I think that you wanted to look at was airflow, is that correct? Airflow through the restaurant. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so um, obviously uh, so we're getting closer to the winter now, so opening windows, a jar might might not be everybody's cup of tea, especially customers coming into the facility, but if we can keep that nice fresh air coming through somewhere over that that'd be that'd be my advice. Um, but as well as that, ensuring that you use um, products, i.e. the flexor tool, that can potentially clean and dust or your ventilation because if you're getting clogs up of dust uh, in, in the air vent then the air is not circulating as, uh, as efficiently uh, as, as what we need it to be. Um, yeah, so that, that would be my advice. Um, this uh, flexible tool here, um, otherwise known as a spanky, uh, is a microfiber product. As all the products that we'll be speaking about today, including microfiber cloths and flat mopping systems, uh, and the good the fact about microfiber is you can, you can use it more than once, it's not a disposable, it's not going to cost you um, the earth to, to implement these systems guys, um, but yep, yeah, use, wash it, as long as you've got washing facilities on site, it's, it's a goer for me basically. Um, obviously this, this, um, this setting here, the, the, the ceilings are not too high so we, can, we don't have to attach a telescopic pole onto this, but potentially if you are dealing with higher spaces, all our telescopic poles will fit onto these systems, whether that's a, um, a duster, whether that's a, a wind, window cleaning for the, uh, for the internal windows, uh, whatever it might be. Yeah, so, uh, I think with the, with the product being quite flat as well, so it can get into those little ridges around the outside, yeah, which I think yeah. is where the dust sits quite often. Yeah. So it's quite, just, just show the guys at home, it's quite easy to get into the external yeah. parts as well. So not only are we cleaning the vents there, we're getting rid of all the dust, we can actually get into the hard to reach areas. Would your staff normally like stand on a chair or something to try and get into the, the areas? smaller one? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's quite nice again for health and safety, guys. It's just a very simple tool that can help get rid of all that um, dust and things that do clog up their high reach without having to stand on chairs yeah, and wobble yeah. around at high level. I know you've got quite a lot of um, high level products in the restaurant as well that tend to be dusting so it's a dual tool for that and um, as Tom mentioned as well the, the sleeve can be removed and laundered as, as with all the products that we're going to show you today and um, 
as it's high reach guys it's probably just best to leave that dry and we are just using it as a dusting tool but if you would like to dampen it it's a microfiber product so it works just on the same process as lift and remove so we're quite happy for you to damp that if you need to but high levels not necessarily high contact so just a dusting tool there is quite handy Certainly. to keep the airflow going through yeah. that restaurant we don't need to focus so much on the high level if it is like kelly's going to speak to you in a moment it is more that surface touch point oh. areas where we get and lots of uh, customers coming in to establishments like this, so, so yeah. Um, so over to you, to the touch point, Kelly. Tell me, Andrew, which are like the hidden places that you keep thinking, oh, we've missed that, we've missed that? Always in the tables, tables uh, and bowls as well, the toilets, all the handles. Yes, yeah, so push plates, handles, um, touch plates underneath the table. So really important, guys, as we touched on before, to make not necessarily just spray the tops of the tables. It's quite difficult in a setting like this just to show you, but we'll try our best just to show. Just for the purposes of demonstration, we're using our tea can e um, eco water, which if you watched our webinar last week, you can see is a, a cleaner and disinfectant. So we're using that in comparison and in, sorry, in, in conjunction with our in microfiber cleaning. Again, I won't bore you with microfiber, but microfiber is a very different concept. With microfiber, we're talking about lift and remove, guys. This product will not kill anything. But what we can ensure when we're cleaning all these surfaces within the restaurant is that we're lifting and removing everything that's on the surface. That coupled with the ECA, we're getting the clean and the disinfect that we always talk about. So if we are just spraying the area, guys, there's absolutely no point spraying this area, getting some blue roll or wiping it off and walking away. Okay, we've just wasted everybody's time and I think Angela will agree, the most expensive bit of equipment in here is the waitresses, the waiters, obviously yourself. <laughs> so making the staff and the, you know, people work more efficiently is obviously that instant first cost saving. The second thing I would say about microfiber, as Tom alluded to before, we need to use these products flat. Okay, if we're screwing them up in our hands, we're not getting the real surface coverage. Okay, so impossible, we want to try and use them flat. You'll notice we've brought a few colours with us today. Do you have a colour coding system, just of an interest? Or... We don't. Actually. You don't? Okay, well that's fair to say, I don't think a lot of people do. But it's quite nice in, 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 this, in these times, certainly, to introduce some sort of colour system. Certainly between the front of house and the toilets, just to make everybody feel a little safer that that blue cloth I'm using here of the front of the house, when I'm going into the bathroom, I'm going to move that to a red one, just so we know there's no cross-contamination. Again, that's difficult with just using blue roll, we're not quite sure where it's going or where it's being used. But by introducing a microfiber system, we can introduce colour coding really easily. So we've sprayed the surfaces that we're going to use. For me, again, chairs, as you pointed out before. Again, we've wiped the tops of the surfaces. Guys, we'll try and keep these cloths as flat as we possibly can. But when it goes to using the next surface, i.e. under the table, we're going to flip that and use a different side. So we're going to come around here and make sure we're getting underneath, keeping it as flat as possible, and right underneath the surfaces here. Because this is where people will touch, guys, okay? Not necessarily on here. You'll pull yourself in from the table. We'll pull ourselves in from the chair. So when it goes to using the chair, we're going to flip it again. Remember a cloth's got eight clean sides. Okay, so where that might have been a J cloth, we're dipping and wringing, which is causing cross-contamination. If we're using a microfiber cloth, it's spray, it's lift, remove. Everything we've picked up then, we're going to send to the washing machine. We're not going to be passing around. What I'd like to say on top of that, guys, is uh, complete, no, we don't sell chemicals, but just bear in mind that contact time. We don't want to be spraying Absolutely. directly onto the surface and wiping it clean off. I have to bear in mind, you know, certain contacts. I'm not going to go into that with you because you need to speak to your chemical um, supplier about that, but just, uh, just be aware of that. I think the important thing for people to realise as well is when using a cloth like this, as I said, if we're rotating, we're getting a clean cloth every time, we're yeah. getting a clean surface, yeah. everything's getting clean contact clean, yeah. um, which is certainly in a higher level of cleaning where we recommend, but there's no difference why you can't do it here, there's no okay. reason why we can't do it in a school, we can have a clean surface for every table, there's no reason why we can't do it in a leisure centre, we can have a clean piece for every piece of equipment. So my suggestion would be, um, Andrew's already mentioned he's, he's lucky enough to have 30 covers tonight, so we're looking at cleaning 30 the table 30 times. 30 cloths sounds like a lot guys, but remember we're only going to wash it and reuse it the day after. We're not going to be throwing it away. So there's a real cost saving in there I think to, to bring something like that into the situation. And that's the great thing about microfiber, we can wash it, we can reuse it. So yes it is an initial outlay for you guys and for your staff, but once it's there it's done, it's hard, it's done. I think, I think um, as Kelly's touched on that really well, um, is the, the, way, uh, <laughs> the way we should prepare our cleaning products. 
is the same way that we should prepare our food or our, or our tableware. You know, be ready for your next sitting, be ready for your next day, have all your cloths washed, folded yeah. and ready to use. So, you, you know, you're going to save on time, all your staff know where they're up to. Um, I think that's a good, you know, a really good point there that you need to, you know, just bear in mind. I think as well when using that kind of equipment, it's not that tempting to carry a wet cloth around with you or some damp yeah. roll around in your pocket or something yeah. like that. Yeah, that wouldn't happen. Uh, yeah, it just yeah. looks a little bit. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Maybe I don't need fresh drugs as, as, as high as high brows as this yeah. one. <laughs> so Andrew, uh, since you've reopened after the lockdown, what have your challenges been? Uh, so the first one was out of my comfort zone. I had to come in the week before and do a full risk assessment, uh, front of house and kitchen. Uh, we obviously had to add signage to the floors so it was yeah. direct, yeah. so there was a one-way system in place. Uh, we've only got one way in, one way out, so we had to put the way signs there so people were aware. Yeah. Uh, the addition of face masks for just staff yeah. at first, yeah. that was the law, that's since changed obviously. Okay. Uh, the spacing of the tables, we had to take quite a lot of tables out. It, where we could, we were using tables as barriers. So people felt a little bit further away. Yeah. Uh, the, the main thing behind it was we wanted people to come in and feel safe. Oh, and yeah, the cup, I keep coming back out of And you've lost the you've lost the bar. Because this lost, is a restaurant bar, isn't we've it? We've lost the bar trade because we just thought people would feel safer if they were just using it for food. So yeah. People have had a few drinks and they come in, they tend to get louder and yes, it goes out the window. Which we all know about. <laughs> Give <Gilly's> charts. <laughs> Um, so obviously you've lost custom there. Um, what we don't want to lose is, is um, overspending on cleaning gadgets, I suppose, or cleaning products, uh, disposable. You need to look at something that's a little bit more sustainable. So actually, you know, the systems that we're talking about today, you know, require of interest to, to yourselves and you know, other business owners in your in your in your area of in your field of work. Um, so yeah. Um, one more product demonstration, guys, is the um, is a quick response flat mopping system. We were speaking to Andrew off air before about um, what what he currently uses um, in the uh, in the restaurant area, and it's, it's the old fashioned style mopping bucket, which I suppose brings many risks. You know, if there is a spillage during during service, um, you know, we don't want to be causing slips, trips, and falls by. Um, Soaking through, sloshing water around during service time, it's a bit not presentable to you know your clientele. Um, obviously, cross contaminating the, the dirty and the clean water as soon, so as, soon as your, your mop has hit, the, has hit the floor surface, then goes back into the bucket, you, you're basically cleaning with dirty water. So, what we have today here is the, uh, is the Pro Mist, and we've, we've got our two, two can ECA solution. Uh, directly in there, so that's going to clean and going to sanitise. Um, and so basically, every time we press the we press the mop and press the trigger, it's a fresh clean every single time. And uh, as Kelly mentioned before, it's um, it's lift and remove. So you, you're killing on contact, and then you're lifting and removing the bacteria, the virus from the from the surface. And and in essence, the floor is going to be a, a cleaner. It's going to be drier a lot, a lot faster than what you would if you were sloshing water around with a with a with a traditional mop and bucket. I think for a restaurant, this is well perception of a lot of things. Uh, which you said before, a lot of people, are, you know, they want to see what you're using, they want to see mops and buckets. You know, that hey. looks a lot smarter to be honest with you. <laughs> it's easier to use that. It's lightweight. It's yeah. you know, your staff are going to feel more comfortable using it. That you're not having to to and fro from from back of house to fill up your your mop bucket and, and then slosh all the water around. You have basically got five hundred ml tank there, uh, and that's going to last you. That's going to last you all day. And then we just replace the ECA water at the end of the shift. So, so certainly um, in this environment, I, this this uh, is a must. I would say. Would I still need to put a wet floor sign out afterwards just in case, or does it dry it fully? I suppose that depends on the floor, but I, I would still I would still keep up with safety measures just in case. You're obviously not going to have to. Have the wet floor sign up for as long as what you would do if you was using a traditional mop and a bucket. But yeah, that's a very good question. Um, I, I would still, I would still put a wet floor, floor sign up. Uh, Andrew, yeah, yeah, certainly. I think the nice thing as well is, um, I think during lockdown, you know, 
he said earlier that we, we wouldn't bring really the book out. But I think people want to see the community you talk about being in I think one yeah. of the things that will make people we'll feel a lot safer while that about is knowing that cleaning's happening. So actually, an introduction is something that's quite safe to bring yeah. out during the service, might be a good intro. Yeah. Yeah. Not only have you brought all these great things to make people feel safe while they're eating out, yeah. if you can physically see things happening while you're out, and then I think yeah. that makes people a lot, a lot feel a lot safer. Um, people yeah. reading to me before, we're all in this together, yeah, really, and cleaning has become yeah. certainly one of the top subjects that people want to talk about. Um, so I wouldn't be offended if I was out yeah. and about and I saw that the restaurant staff were actually yeah. looking on top of the cleaning, yeah. and I think you was a manager. Definitely, yeah, it looks a lot smarter as well. I don't think, I, I, I think, um, you know, we, we all need to work together on this. Uh, we're here, we want to share our expertise with you guys, reach out to us. We, we're here to help you, so help us, help you, get in touch, um, send over emails, keep questions coming through, we'll answer those at, um, at the end of this session, and, um, and yeah, we'll, um, hopefully we'll, we'll see you one day. Um, so uh, I'm just going to summarise now on what we spoke about today, and then we're going to go into the, into the Q&A with, with yourselves, the audience. I mean, just to summarise, I alluded to the fact at the beginning of the presentation that we're not here really to give the big hard sell. I think during this service, we've brought three products to you. We've brought something to clean the high level, we've brought something to clean the surfaces, and then we've brought a rapid response floor cleaning equipment. All the equipment we've shown you today can be washed, tumble, dry, and reused. So, sustainability. We can offer colour coding with the mops, we can offer colour coding with the cloth, so good control of infection. I think presentable as well, I think it's, yeah. it's fair to say that things look nicer than just bringing out the old blue roll and the twine mop and the PY yeah. mop and bucket. Um, so visually it's nice for people to see, so people can see that cleaning's happening during the day as well. And ultimately for you as a restaurant owner, um, it's all about what's going out of the pocket. Throwing, constantly throwing things away, throwing away j cloths, throwing away blue rolls, throwing away mop heads. We can't sustain this. This is going to be around for a while now. Um, it's not going away anytime soon. Cleaning is something that's really the top focus. So we need to start thinking now about sustainability, what products we can use um, going forward. So yeah, we've just brought in three products for you today, guys. Again, as Tom said, this is the type of thing that we want to do all day, every day. So although we are just here with Andrew and his team at the restaurant today, if you're out there today and you're from a school, you're from a leisure centre, any establishment throughout the network, speak to your distributor, ask them to speak to us at Robert Scott's, whether we come out with your distributor or your distributor's happy for us to come out alone, we're happy to come and do that in your working environment safely. We can also offer training over Zoom or over Teams, so if that's something that you'd be interested in, we can come and do that for you guys as well. And as Tom said at the beginning, it's not just the Tom and I, there's nine of our colleagues spread out throughout the UK, so wherever you are in the UK, contact your local distributor where you get your jackets or your cleaning supplies from and ask them to give Robert Scott's a shout. So hopefully we can come and do this in your, in your um, establishments and hopefully train your guys on how best to um, take care of the cleaning on the day to day. So Andrew, has this uh, been helpful to you? We've got to look to implement all of those systems. Yeah, Put you on the spot there. Definitely be taking the mop off, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and one of these, the spanker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just for, just for it's the funny that one always goes down really well, doesn't it? Yeah, that one goes down really well. And I think the, micro, uh, the Microsoft and yeah. like you said, instead of Blue Roll, cost effective. Because they might have Blue Roll, we don't yeah. think. Yeah, it's a bit silly. Yeah. You use it for everything, floor spillages, yeah. tables, yeah. tables uh, so yeah, that could see. Yeah, and the colour code is always that something you might look at in yeah, the future? Yeah, definitely one for the bar, one for the coffee machine, one for the house hotel, yeah. one for the chairs, the one for the toilets. Definitely. Brilliant, yeah. brilliant. Which again makes everybody feel a little bit more comfortable knowing that different cloths and different products are used in different areas, <laughs> which is what colour coding is all about. And again, something else that we can, oh, yeah, so we can talk to your staff about. So, as simple as that, really, just getting in touch if, you, if, you need, if you've got any um, questions. Give us a shout. Look forward to hearing from you. And uh, we'll move over to the, uh, the Q&A now. Thank you. Thanks again. Brilliant. Well, uh, thanks for that. As if by magic, we've now got um, Kelly and Tom here <laughs> to answer some of your questions. Um, so what we're going to do is, is just run through a few questions that we had submitted using our hashtag for these webinar series, which is hashtag ask, ask the King team. 
Um, and we're going to um, run through those questions first, if that's uh, okay with yourself, um, Kelly and Tom. And then we'll move on to the audience questions that have been submitted. We've had a couple of questions through from Martin. So thanks very much, Martin. And we'll come on to those at the end once we've covered these questions that, that came in um, ahead of today's webinar. So um, the first one, um, if I can, can put this to you, um, Kelly, and it actually ties in with one of Martin's questions is, um, what, what are the cost savings of microfiber versus a disposable system? Um, it's really difficult to put an initial cost on it. Um, I think as we as we sort of mentioned there in the video, um, the major thing is how we use microfiber very differently to how we use um, disposable products. So uh, granted, initially, there's going to be that initial cost because with microfiber, you have to buy everything all at once, whereas with more traditional products, you might buy them day to day or week to week. Um, but certainly the cost benefits come in um, because we're not throwing things away. We're not disposing of it. Um, as Andrew said, they go through tons of blue roll every day. Um, I spoke to somebody the other day that said they were going through lots and lots of J cloth. So the cost saving is that we're not throwing away, we're actually laundering instead. The second cost benefit is the way we use the water and the chemical. Um, so we're not filling up lots of large buckets. We're not using 10, 25 litres of buckets of water and chemical and then throwing those away. As you saw in the demonstration, we're using spray bottles and we're using um, triggers, um, which not only gives us that clean application every time, but it also means we're not throwing throwing lots of um, chemical and water away. So there's a cost saving there. Um, and the most important one, and the one we talk about all the time is the saving in time. Um, as again, we said in the video, you know, your people are your most expensive asset. So we can, you know, stop them standing around filling empty buckets, you know, filling up mop buckets and filling up pails of water. Um, if we can make that cleaning a bit more of a rapid response kind of impact. Um, again, that saving is there because they're not wasting their time with traditional old fashioned products. Um, so I can't give you a, you know, a plus and a minus on what the savings are, um, but I think just, uh, you know, just go to any hospital, um, you know, at the moment, they, they will definitely put forward microfiber as the most infection control aspect and certainly a cost saver over a short period of time. Right. Brilliant. Thanks for that, Kelly. And um, just just staying on the, the microfiber subject, we, we also had a question about um, other environments that microfiber can potentially be used in. So yeah. uh, aside from workplaces, is, is there anywhere it's not suitable, for example? Um, not really. No, I would say microfiber can be used on any hard surface. I mean, we didn't get around to it, unfortunately, uh, in the restaurant, but obviously in the toilets, um, it's brilliant. Um, and so, yeah, any any desk services, I think we touched on schools, colleges, gyms, that sort of thing. I think my honest answer really would be microfiber is not amazing on heavy soil. Um, so, yeah, it doesn't work well in the rugby club with lots of heavy dirt and, and mud. Um, and it's not amazing on heavy buildup of grease either. Um, so there is still places where, you know, a, a brush and a mop is certainly still needed. But I think for the majority of cleaning, um, and certainly at the moment where cleaning is high impact, um, there's not really anywhere where it can't be used. Um, just, you know, take consideration as, as we said in there for color coding and things like that. But most hard surfaces, um, we didn't get around to the glass cleaning either, which we've got certain products, you know, we've got great glass cleaning equipment um, that we can use for microfiber. But no, you know, really other than the old um, heavy soil, it's, it's, it's pretty good everywhere. Great. Thank you very much. Um, another one that, that came in, um, I think, seeing, seeing that we were um, doing some recording in, in hospitality was from um, an, another restaurant owner. And they've just got a query about colour coding. Um, they own a, a chain of restaurants and they've asked if the colour coding has to be the same throughout each site. Can I ask you, you that one, Tom? Yeah, of course. Um, yeah, hi guys. So um, as long as colour coding, as long as we all understand which colours are used in which areas you've got that color segregation as long as the um you know the blue is used front of house um in, in every establishment that that is involved with the chain of restaurants then certainly so um it doesn't have to be there's no law towards which colors have to be used in which areas right. um, i think the only place that that they implicate that is in is in uh, is in the hospitals um, so when it, anywhere outside hospitals, you're talking about restaurants there, Joanne. Um, so yeah, as long as as long as there is a guideline um, and all the staff are confident on which colours are used in which areas, then then certainly so. Um, at Robert Scotts, we do offer a colour coding chart as well. So right. if, if you if you would like um, the the material, we can send that over for you guys. Yes. Yeah, so thank you. Great. 
And then another question that, that came through just on, on other workplace environments um, is, is about um, somebody asked what the best way to introduce cleaning procedures to office based staff would be for their own sort of desk areas and, and the general work environment. Can I put that one to you, Tom, again? Yeah, yeah, of course. So um, very much similar to, uh, to the restaurant that was that was at, um, in, in, in the video demonstration there. Um, what, what I would say is in offices, you've got um, multi-story levels. So what we don't want to be doing is carrying mop buckets up and down stairs for, for time and for, for obviously health and safety reasons. So a flat mopping system in those type of locations is, is a must for me. Um, um, I mean, what we need to what what we need to be looking at is is is, is obviously we need to be um, trusting in in the products that we're using, reducing on on the quantity that we're using, but increasing on the quality. You know exactly, and that's what it's all about. So very much similar. Going back to your question there, very much similar to to the restaurant there. Microfiber can certainly be used in that. We've got nothing against disposable, um, which could be used if if you've got no washing facilities on site. So so. So yeah, hopefully that answers your question. Yeah, great, brilliant. Um, just moving on to, to some of the questions that are coming through on, on the chat today. Um, I'll, I'll ask the, the first one, um, which has come through from um, Martin, um, and it's on microfiber, Kelly. So if I can come to you with that one. He asks, how often can microfiber cloths be washed? And in practice, how often do most people wash them before replacing them? Um, well, our microfibers are actually guaranteed for 500 washes, um, but it's a really interesting question that, and, and I'm glad it got asked because a lot of people um, put the wash test on there. I think in us, for all, in honest opinion, I think after 12 months, um, the cloths do need replacing. And um, so if we think we've got 365 days in a year, if they're going to be laundered every single day. Um, wash tests are amazing and they do they do help us and they do work, um, but we've got to take into account that we're going to actually use the product in between. Um, so after 500 days, if we use that as, an, a, you know, as a stretch, these products do look a bit shabby. So although the microfiber cloth may be still working and lifting and removing, um, it, it doesn't look appealing. I think my honest answer to, um, to my customers certainly is after 12 months I think it's worth um, re-looking and re-replacing them. Um, microfiber products that we actually put out and um, we've done our best to date stamp them and um, so when you do buy them in you can log the date on which you ordered them um, and then after 12 months you can take those out or after 500 washes you can take those out of the process um, but if you are laundering these products every single day and um, which obviously we do we do um, you know recommend I would say that after 12 months really um, is time to change them. Yeah. And do you always have to use a, a cleaning agent with the microfiber, Kelly? Um, not always. I think you've just got to be sensible and practical about what the environment that you're in. Um, obviously, in a hygiene setting, so if you are in a public area or certainly in a, in a bathroom area, we would always um, advocate a, a sanitizer and a disinfectant. Um, the only product we don't say to use really with microfiber is bleach. Um, obviously, it's not very widely used at the moment. Um, I have seen a lot of it creeping back in during the pandemic, um, but bleach will just actually burn the fibers of the microfiber. Um, it'll also discolor the cloths and mops quite a lot as well. Microfiber is extremely fine and it can't hold on to colour very well. Um, so if you do use bleach, it will discolour it. Um, but other than that, there isn't really any chemical that we say don't use with it. Um, as I said in the video, um, microfiber lifts and removes. Um, so the chemical that we're adding with it is just it's just only going to improve the quality of the clean. It's just going to leave some sort of sanitisation behind or disinfecting behind. Um, but actually at home, I just use water, um, you know, hopefully. I haven't got all these uh, bugs and things at home. So yeah, I choose the water. Um, again, people like the smell of a lot of cleaning agent as well. Cleaning is very, you know, it's, it's perception is in our smell. Um, so yeah, that helps with that as well. But um, no, not really, but it doesn't do any harm. It's only going to benefit the cloth if we do have it, a cleaner or a sanitizer to it. Right, thank you very much for that. Um, just coming to you, Tom, um, I know in the, in the video you mentioned about some of the training. Um, somebody's asked if there's any cost associated with a site visit or product training. Yeah, there's, there's, no, there's no cost. We, we do that free of charge. Obviously, you know, we're not going to go to the butter shop, but, um, but potentially for, you know, for like a, a large group, a, a chain of um, restaurants, hotels, um, chain of leisure centres, yes, certainly. And it's not the only way to get in touch with, uh, with Rob Scott's. Like um, Kelly mentioned in the, um, 
in the video demonstration. There is nine of us. We do occupy, you know, nationwide sales. Um, however, we have the uh, internal support as well. So if it is a question from Anna at the butter shop, and she, you know, she wants she wants um, confidence in in what she's using or advice on what what kind of products she can implement in her, um, you know, in her cleaning activities, then then certainly fire those over to our to our head office. But use your distributors, you know, use your local distributors. They they have um, you know the they have the support from Robert Scott as a manufacturer. And, uh, and they can surely answer the questions for you as well. So we, we work very close, closely with them and they can get us involved if required. But um, yeah, just keep, keep, it, keep in touch one way or another. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, well, there are certainly lots of, lots of ways to, to keep in touch these days, aren't there? Um, oh, yeah. We've had a, an, another question from, from Martin um, and it'd be good to get both of your um, opinions on this one. So I'll come to you first, Kelly. And, and Martin's question is, what is the biggest challenge during the COVID pandemic, apart from meeting increased demand for products and how are Robert Scott addressing it? Uh, do you mean just generally, what are our challenges as people are, is it as- I think it's the, the, biggest, the biggest cleaning challenge. So perhaps with customers or, or what customers are asking you about what they're kind of finding are the, are the most common problems maybe. Yeah, I think, I think people are a little bit nervous really that, um, you know, what do we have to do to meet the demands? Um, I think, again, we mentioned in the video, everybody just expects you to know what to do. Um, everybody just expects you to be a cleaner. Um, and, you know, it's, you know, we're a domestic. It's not a given that everything's there. So our biggest challenge really is getting out and giving people the confidence to step forward. Um, you know, our other biggest challenge, of course, is, is getting the product to the customer. And there's been very high demand for J cloths, very high demand for um, trigger sprays, um, because people are just going directly to the old fashioned way of cleaning because they think that's the only way. And um, so hopefully today we've demonstrated some ways of moving more modern technology in. Don't be scared of, you know, it doesn't have to be used and throw, use and throw. There are other ways of combating it. Um, so for us, our biggest challenge really is getting out there and talking to the distributors and, you know, giving the end user that confidence to maybe look at something different and um, again sorry I know I keep referring to the video but as we do say in the video um, you know it's awful to think about it but this is not going anywhere it's not going away anywhere fast we just can't keep throwing things away like we are doing um, you know before this we were very conscious of plastic consumption we were very conscious of disposables and it just seems to have gone out of the window a little bit um, so yeah my challenge certainly and, and another challenge of Robert Scott's is to get people thinking a little bit differently um, so this can be a prolonged thing and not an immediate you know let's just use it and throw it all away. Mm. And, and what about you Tom have you had any other anything anything to add to that from challenges you've had with with customers or, or conversations you've been having? Yeah very much similar to what Kelly said really have confidence in the modern techniques that have been around for for you know for quite some time now and uh, obviously the Covid has, has put the scares on everybody, isn't it? But, you know, we all have to appreciate that we can fight the virus off with soapy water, you mm -hmm. know? So introducing like microfiber systems and, um, and chemical sanitizers, then, you know, just have confidence in those, in, in those products. We need, to, we need to ensure we're using quality and not quantity. And that's, that's probably the best advice I'd, I'd give to, to that really. That's really helpful. Um, we've we've still got another few minutes, so if you do if you do have any questions to to submit to um, to Kelly and Tom, we've got a few more minutes to answer some questions. We've had um, a question through from Arlene Bell, um, and she asks, "What cleaning products are good for?" Sorry, did you get that one? Sorry, so, I missed that. I do apologise. Sorry. Okay, no problem. So it's a question from Arlene and she has asked what cleaning products are good for schools? Um, well, Robert Scott's have a full range of cleaning products. Again, check out our website. I guess it's all about what you've, what you've got available to you. Um, so if you do have a laundry available, absolutely, we can discuss um, microfiber systems. If, it's, if you're not ready for that yet, we can look at um, some more um, semi-disposable products. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it all depends on the size of the school, how you work, mm -hmm. um, the footfall of the people that are coming in and out. Um, so yeah, it, it really does depend. And that's where we step in really and our distributors step in. And we understand that, you know, one doesn't fit all. 
um, so what we might recommend for one school might be completely different for another one um, but yeah happy to discuss that whether that be over a web chat or um, you know speaking uh, speaking to us directly and bringing us to site um, but yeah anything really it just depends on the size of the school and what you have available to you to use. We have, um, we have sectorized catalogs as well. So we have an education sector catalog, which we're more than happy to share with you. And um, we can send that over on a PDF. So that gives you um, guidance about, you know, the, the range of products that we offer to that particular sector. So have a look at that, get in touch guys, and we can send that over to you. Yeah, and, and also Arlene, we, we, um, we did run a, a webinar on, on cleaning for the education sector, um, which might be worth um, checking out as well, which is, um, we can link you to that on the, the Robert Scott YouTube channel, um, where we kind of covered off a few different scenarios for education, um, which touch on some of the products that, that can be used um, by Robert Scott. So we'll make sure that, that we follow up with you um, separately on that one to make sure that you, you, you can um, view that one too. And hopefully you'll find it helpful. Um, we haven't got any more questions that have come through um, on, on the chat or on the Q&A, but we, we do have um, one more poll to ask everybody. So um, just from today's session, it'd be good to kind of get a feel for um, how confident you feel about implementing new cleaning practices in your workplace now. So um, whether it's potentially that you'd like some more advice or you feel more confident about some of the, um, some of the processes and um, products and, and ideas that Kelly and Tom have shared with us today. Um, we'd be really interested in your thoughts on this one and, um, and any, any um, further comments that you've got there. So if everybody could cast their vote um, before we wrap up today's session, that would be, that would be brilliant. 